What's up mobile devs? Today we are going to make this amazing circular carousel animation in React Native by just using the reanimated package. This tutorial is heavily inspired by an animation I saw on Twitter made by Capsoft in Swift UI. He has also a YouTube account and I highly recommend it. The secret of this animation lies behind reanimated's interpolate function. I've made several tutorials about it and if you want you can find them in the video description. Before proceeding, I would also like to sincerely thank my patrons. This animation was made for them, but I decided to extend it to YouTube because it seemed particularly suitable for a video tutorial as well. If you love React Native animations, you can support me on Patreon where I post the source code of a new animation every week. Don't forget that you can always find the written version of my tutorials even on reactive.io. You can find the link in the video description. That said, we can finally move on to the code part. So here I've created a React Native project with the Expo CLI, and in this project I've already added a few assets. So basically these are simply um, images downloaded from Unsplash, and I've already added them inside the Assets folder. So since we are going to use Reanimated, of course here you can see that I've already installed the React Native Reanimated package. Uh, we are going to use the version 3.0, uh, 3.3.0, uh, but I feel like uh, this uh, uh, this tutorial will even work with the uh, version 2.0 and uh, and so forth. So in order to deal with images, uh, I've also installed the Expo image package, but of course you can simply rely on the image component from React Native. So uh, this one uh, is totally optional. Uh, since we're using Reanimated, don't forget to add even the Reanimated plugin in the public config.js file. That said, let's get back to our app file. Let's get rid of this file, of this uh, uh, text uh, component. And let's start to define here the circ circular carousel uh, component. So uh, here Copilot is helping me um, since the beginning and uh, everything is correct. Of course, we are going to pass the data array to this component, but we need to define the component itself. So uh, this component uh, uh, will be quite complex, so let's create a separate components folder for it. And let's add here the circular carousel index.tsx file. So this component will be, of course, a React functional component. Uh, and uh, we are going to define the props in a second. But for now, let's simply return a React native view. So let's export even this component and let's import it right there. So uh, TypeScript is complaining and that's because we need to define the data um, property. So let, let's define here the props and let's specify the data array. So let's pass the props right there and let's retrieve the data array right there. So uh, of course uh, here data is not an array of strings since uh, we are passing uh, uh, an image node. So the best way to define the property, uh, in my opinion, is simply by reusing the image props source from Expo image. Since uh, at the very end, we are simply going to pass these images to the Expo image component. So let's simply do that. And uh, here we go. So um, right, right now nothing is appearing on the screen and then simply because uh, we still need to define, uh, uh, we, we are simply returning a React Native view here. So let's fix that. Let's use uh, uh, a flat list. So of course uh, we are going to deal with the, with the list. In React Native you have multiple options. So you can use a scroll view or a flat list. In this specific case we have uh, very few items. Uh, so we have uh, simply 10 images. But uh, in my opinion, uh, it's still worth to use uh, a flat list if you can do that. So let's use a flat list from React Native. Let's pass the data. Let's define the key extractor. And let's simply uh, define the render item method. So for now, let's simply return. Well, let's uh, simply return what Copilot suggests us. So here we go. We have uh, our list. Uh, so let's uh, fix that since we want an horizontal list and let's uh, add margin right just to see that we have implemented this list nicely. So that's fine. 
uh, let's center the list. Uh, actually, mm, let's simply rely on the style of the flat list. Let's use position absolute and let's put it in at the bottom. So here we go. So since now everything uh, is looking great, uh, but of course we don't want to use uh, this uh, view right there. We want to build a separate uh, circular carousel list item uh, um, component. So let's do that. Let's simply create here a list item file and let's create here our component. So we are going to define later the properties and uh, as always, let's simply return a React Native view. Let's export this component and let's take this component right there. So circular carousel list item. So I believe that right now it is working properly, but of course we are going to pass here a few properties. So uh, we are going to retrieve the item and later we are even going to use the index. So here let's add the image source, so the item, since uh, here we are simply iterating over the data and uh, the data is uh, an image source array. So we are passing the image source item to this uh, uh, component right there. And let's pass even the index. So we are going to use the index later, but of course we are going to use that. So uh, of course we need to define the properties even there. So uh, we are simply reusing the same trick that we used previously. Right now Copilot has suggested us the trick uh, and let's import uh, image props from Expo image. So let's fix that. Let's add the React function component type and the props. So here let's get the image source and the index and uh, let's see. So here TypeScript is not complaining anymore, but of course we need to fix the style. So let's add some mocked style here. Let's specify width 100, height 100, that's fine. And later we are going to fix that. And let's even specify a background color of red just to see something. So here we go. So uh, let's think about how many items uh, do we want. So the point is that uh, um, in our carousel, we do want to have always three items that are um, locked for uh, the window width. So uh, for each, uh, for this window width dimension, we want to have three, just three circular carousel list item. So let's uh, access first of all the window width by using the dimension CPI from React Native. Let's take here, here the width, let's rename it and let's define the list item width as window width divided by three. So let's pass the width right there and uh, let's see what's going on. So here let's even fix the height uh, so we can set the height uh, equal to list them eight width since we want uh, a perfect uh, square. But instead of doing that, let's simply specify aspect ratio equal to one. So it is identical and let's fix the border radius. So I feel that right now it is already looking good. Uh, the point is that uh, of course we want to display images. So let's uh, start to use the expo image component here. Let's pass the source and let's fix the style. Let's simply do flex one. So right now, some images are already showing them. And uh, uh, let's pass the border radius to this component right there. Let's increase it a bit. And I think that we are almost done. So we simply need to pass the margin property, let's say equal to 10 or to five. And let's reload. So yeah, everything is looking great. Uh, let's simply pass the margin uh, to the other component. Otherwise we are not going to have uh, three perfect items uh, inside the window width. And here we are. So um, let's increase even the flat list height, let's say 300 and let's center the list. 
so yeah, uh, the point is that uh, the justify content property shouldn't be passed to the style uh, to the style of the flat list. We need to pass to the content container style. So let's even pass the align items property. And here we go. We are almost done with the list setup, but there is a missing thing. So um, that's true that we want three items uh, inside the window width, but uh, the point is that by doing that, uh, um, the user is not aware uh, that the list is actually scrollable. So in my opinion, it's uh, quite nice to have uh, this kind of visualization where you have, uh, let's say, half of the left circle and the half of the right circle visible. And in order to achieve that, uh, we simply need to make space even for another item. So let's say window width divided by four, since we are going to have three items right there. And then we are going to have uh, half item here and half item there. So let's, uh, uh, let's even decrease the margin, so let's say three. And I think uh, it is already fine. So right now we can start to think about the animation. And in order to deal with the animation, the first thing that we need to understand is that uh, the full point of the animation is to access the scroll offset and pass the scroll offset to the items and uh, making the items updated, updating uh, by following the scroll offset. So uh, of course, the first thing that we need to do is to access actually the current amount that we are scrolling on the horizontal axis. And to do that, we can simply rely on the onscroll uh, property on the onscroll callback from the flat list. So we can access there the event.nativeEvent.contentOffsetX. So let's see. And here you can see that we are perfectly able to access the content offset. So it is usually a good practice whenever you define the onscroll callback to pass even the scroll even throttle property. So the scroll even, even throttle properties uh, property tells, tells us how many time uh, each, uh, how many milliseconds the onscroll method must be fired. And the point is that here we are saying that we want to fire the onscroll method each 16 milliseconds. So the point is that, of course, Copilot is guessing it right. We want to have a six FPS animation. So let's see what will suggest us. So basically, that means that we want, uh, in order to have a 60 frame per second, we want to fire the onscroll uh, callback each 16 milliseconds. So we can get that by simply doing 100, 1000 milliseconds divided 60 FPS and that we are going to have 16 milliseconds. So hopefully that was clear. So uh, this looks great, of course, uh, but we want to store this value and we want to pass this value to the singular circular carousel list item. And in order to do that, the best way to do, uh, to make uh, this possible is to rely on the concept of the reanimated shared value. So let's define here the content offset shared value. So let's uh, pass, let's store the value inside this content offset. And let's pass this content offset to the circular carousel list item. So let's say content offset equal to content offset. So we uh, TypeScript is complaining here and that's because we still need to define the shared value inside the, these props. So let's say content offset of type animated from React Native Reanimated, shared value uh, of type number. And we are good to go. So we are sure that uh, right now we can deal with the current scroll offset. But we need to find a way to apply this content offset value even to this list right there. So to the singular items that we have right there. And to do that, uh, we really we are really going to rely a lot on, on the interpolate function from reanimated so keep in mind that i've already made a bunch of tutorials about the interpolate function so here i'm going to be a little faster but uh, of course i'm still going to try to explain it and in my opinion the best way to understand how the interpolate function works is to visualize that so um, 
let me write uh, basically some code and uh, we are going to see uh, how the full animation will work. So first of all, um, we are going to do an animation. So of course we need to use an animated style. Let's define here the reanimated style and let's rely on the use animated style hook from reanimated. So let's import uh, use animated style from reanimated. And for now, let's simply return um, an empty style. So uh, let's think about the property that we want to animate. Uh, of course, we are going to update a bunch of property, uh, a bunch of properties, but the point is that for now, we simply want to animate the translate y method. So if the item is highlighted, so for instance, right there, we want to push the item above, and otherwise we want to keep the translation equal to zero. So let's uh, keep things easy for now, and let's simply specify here translate y equal to zero. So we need to pass this reanimated style to this view right there. Uh, for now, of course, we are not animating, but this is, this is still um, an animated style. And in order to, before passing it to this view, we need to convert this view into an animated view. Otherwise, uh, the app is basically going to crash. So let's convert it into an animated view. And let's pass here the reanimated style. So right now, nothing is working. Of course, since we are not animating anything. And uh, let's try to work with the interpolate function in order to start this animation. So here I'm simply going to write an input range and an output range. So copilot is even faster than, uh, than me by far. So here it is wrong a bit, but that's fine. So here I'm going fast, but of course I'm going to stop later and uh, I'm going to explain you what, is, uh, what this code is all about. So let's uh, use the interpolate function there and let's pass this value right here. So here the animation is not working as we expect, but we can still try to understand what is going on. So as mentioned previously, we are applying the interpolate function and the interpolate function is simply a function imported from reanimated that accepts a shared value an input range and an output range. So basically the full idea behind the interpolate function is to map uh, in a very nice way, in a linear way, the, this value. So the point is that uh, whenever the content of said value is going to be equal to index minus one multiplied by list item width, the effective translate y value will be equal to zero. When the content offset dot value is equal to index multiplied by list item width, the output range, the translate y is going to be equal to the value minus list item width divided by two. And if the index plus one, uh, if the content offset dot value is equal to index plus one multiplied by list item width, the translate y value is going to be equal to zero. So it is simply a way to map the input range to the output range by using a specific value that in our case is the content of set dot value. So of course, this, is, this explanation is quite abstract and that's because uh, the index is a really, um, it's not a fixed value, but will change for each item. So let's try to figure that out slowly by following what is going on right there. So in this specific case, uh, of course, this item is the first item of the list. So the index is equal to zero and the content offset even itself is equal to zero. So in this, in this scenario, basically the content offset will be equal to zero. The input range is going to be, since the index is equal to, uh, is equal to zero for this first item, is going to be uh, minus list item width zero and list item width. So we have simply used this input range and we have replaced index with zero. And the output range is going to be, uh, of course, uh, fixed since uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't depend on any index. So as you can guess right there, we have the content offset that is equal to zero. So the when the content offset is equal to zero, 
we are in this specific case and we are going to map the translate value tr translate y value to minus list item width divided by two and as you can see we are exactly mapping it as it follows so what happens if the content offset value um, has a value that is in between to these uh, values right here so what happens is if the content offset is not perfectly uh, exact uh, uh, equal to index minus one multiplied by list item width and so on uh, it will simply be mapped with a value that is in between. So something like there will be mapped with something like there uh, in a linear way. So hopefully that uh, this explanation was clear. Uh, honestly, I've done a bunch of tutorial about the interpolate function and I'm going to put a lot of links in the video description. So uh, feel free to check them inside the video description. So of course that uh, that's not what uh, we do want to achieve. So we still need to fix that. And uh, in my opinion, the easiest way to fix that, so in the easiest way to center the item, uh, is by simply translating it uh, in the uh, on the horizontal axis. So let's do let's do that by summing it uh, list item width divided by two plus list item width. And here we go. So we are simply make room, making room for half of the circle that is right there and the full circle that should be right there. And uh, we are simply going to have an empty uh, view right there. So let's see what is going on. And we can already start to see that the animation is actually started to working properly. But uh, uh, we want to have a, smooth, um, a smoother way of dealing with that. We want to have more control all over the uh, translate y value. So here we, we do have a kind of triangle. We don't have a perfect circle. So let's uh, make a perfect circle. And in order to have more control all over these values, in my opinion, the best way to do that is by simply adding more values to the input range and to the output range. So let's add even the case with index minus two and the index plus two. Of course, uh, the same logic applies. And uh, let's add zero and zero. So in this specific case, nothing is really changing. So almost nothing actually. Um, yeah, the point is that, uh, let's go back on how it was previously. So the point is that uh, in this specific case, uh, the question is uh, what will happen if uh, index uh, uh, is less than index minus one multiplied by, uh, what will happen if content offset dot value is less than index minus one multiplied by list item width? And uh, what will happen if uh, it is greater than index plus one multiplied by list item width? It will not be equal to zero but uh, it will be automatically derived by the interpolate function as uh, um, by following the same pattern. So uh, the trick is that the interpolate function will extend this array. Uh, commonly, in a lot of use cases, we don't want that. So usually we want to clamp the value. We want to force the value to be equal to zero to the, uh, let's say, the outer values of the array. So we want to have this kind of behavior. Previously, um, it was extending the output range, so um, it was using the default, and I believe the default is extend. So as you can see, it is working uh, as follows. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, add, uh, let's return uh, back. Let's add here the other values for the input range and the output range, and let's add here zero and zero. So as uh, you can see, nothing is changing. Everything is equal to how it was previously. But right now we have much more control all over these values. And we can even add here list item width divided by three and list item width divided by three. And as you can see, there is this uh, smooth circular effect right now. And previously it wasn't as smooth as it, uh, as it is right now. So, um, of course, there is a, a problem right there. We are not able to fully scroll the list. And that's because we have added here the translate X value. So we can easily fix that by playing with the, um, with the content container style um, value. So here, let's add 
let's say padding right equal to 300 for now and as you can see everything is working nicely but the best way um, of doing that is simply by relying on the exact value that we want to um, add here so let's uh, start to export the list item with value and let's reuse it right there so we want to make room for half a circle and for a full circle so let's reload and let's see if it's working well it is not so i believe that here we need another circle or actually we need to make room for three items so let's actually try to so yeah so the point is that uh, we we must consider even the items that we have right here so we want to fully translate the the list by considering three items so honestly i really don't know why it is it is uh, perfectly working with three but uh, i feel like uh, uh, it is something uh, that has to do with the limit on the scroll offset but hopefully three multiplied by list item width is fine it is working and so we can simply close our eyes and say that everything is working perfectly so let's get back on this uh, carousel list item the animation is working nice but uh, we want to animate much more things so since we are going to apply the interpolate function to other uh, values so we are going to even update the opacity uh, and the scale property let's uh, define multiple output ranges so let's uh, rename it to translate y output range and let's define here the opacity output range so let's uh, simply put everything equal to one we are going to understand that in a while so let's uh, copy the same exact logic. We always want to map the content offset.value. Let's use this input range, this output range, and the same uh, type of extrapolation. And uh, let's pass here the opacity. So as you can see, the opacity will always be one because the output range is always map every possible content offset value to the value one. But we want to map, uh, we want basically to have uh, the outer value, the outer circles uh, with a lighter opacity. So let's say 0 0.5. Uh, uh, so here, let's say 0 0.9. Of course, I'm simply playing with values. And uh, let's see what's going on. And here you can already start to see that the animation is perfectly working. So the first, uh, the highlighted item will have an opacity equal to 1 the other items are going to have um, an opacity equal to 0 0.9 and at the bottom we are going to have 0 0.5 so maybe let's say 0 0.7 and that's that's fine so we have properly animated the opacity uh, let's finally animate even the scale property so let's say scale output range and uh, let's simply copy the same exact uh, output range that we have used for the opacity, just to keep things easy. Let's define the scale with the interpolation function. And uh, everything here is almost identical, it's always perfectly identical. And uh, let's pass the scale va value right there. So as you can see, we are slightly scaling all the items. But here, let's update a bit the output range and let's increase even further the highlighted item size. And I believe that uh, it is looking uh, kind of great, probably 0 0.8 and 1. Yeah, I believe it is looking uh, almost nice. Yeah, so we are almost done. The point is that we want to have uh, a fully paginated uh, list and right now we are not having that. Um, so in order to have that, uh, we need to play simply with the properties inside the flat list. So let's use uh, paging enabled equal to true. Let's reload. And here, 
you can see that uh, it isn't following uh, the right pagination values. So it is uh, always whooping, uh, for, um, is always considering um, a snap to interval equal to the full window width. We want to fix that and we, will, we want to make the interval, the snapping interval equal to the item width, the list item width. So we can add the snap to interval property and we can set equal to list item width. And we can say that uh, right now the animation is fully working. So let's remove even the horizontal indicator that we have right there. So to, to false. And uh, let's uh, simply play a bit with these uh, values. So let's add the style. So let's add border width equal to two border color equal to white and let's simply add some shadows so shadow opacity equal to 0 0.5 for now shadow color equal to black shadow offset with width equal to 0 so i'm simply relying on the default value suggested by copilot but i believe that uh, these are not working as i was expecting at all so let's apply that here. Okay, perfect. It is uh, definitely working right there. So let's uh, let's decrease a bit the opacity. Let's uh, increase the shadow radius. And uh, I think it is looking great. Uh, so of course uh, these uh, properties are going to work just on iOS. If you are on Android, uh, you simply need to play with the elevation property. So I think that, uh, so let's wait for all the items. And I think that uh, the animation is fully, fully done. So hopefully this tutorial was, uh, was nice. Uh, hopefully you have learned something. I'm really glad, I really like this animation. Um, I was inspired by a tweet from Kavsoft, uh, Kavsoft, so feel free to follow him on Twitter if you really deserve that. And uh, if you have liked this animation and you like this type of animations, so feel free to subscribe to my channel. So uh, if you have any idea for upcoming content, uh, feel free to suggest it uh, in this section below. And uh, of course, thanks a lot for staying with me all this time and see you to the next one.